a, a paid low bandwidth connection. And that's by low right now, not waste any battery or, or incur any costs. That's pretty neat. Uh, there's a lot of things that just work. I, mean, I, I worked through some problems. It probably took me three nights to, to, to get through all the breaking changes. But then I was amazed by how many things I just didn't touch that would just, just work. Anything really that builds on top of the, the HTTP stack just works. And there's a lot of code that does that. I mean, OData is one example. Um, serialization using data contract serializer or the JSON. Um, serializer, so it just works. So I want to show you some of what's um, specific. So now, now that we've kind of gotten through all these tips and tricks to get our code compiling, we're faced with the task of well, what you want to in the show. And um, let me just run this app. I'm not going to challenge the demo gods by switching to my tablet now, which I was going to to show it here. And what I'm running on this machine is actually Windows 8 um, on a VHD. So I'm, it's, um, it's not a VM. So what, what we see here is the first page, and what I have is different conferences grouped by some kind of year. So the current is 2011. Let's scroll through this. Off the screen. About the tab. This control is called uh, the grid view, and it understands showing things in a grouped format like this. If I drill down into one of these, let's see if I that connection. And this is demo quality code right now, so. Um, You'll see that these again are grouped. grouped. So we've got session one, Saturday night, 25, and I can go to the side here. And session two. So these are grouped by agenda time slot. I can switch this and say I want to group this by, by track. Now I've got the groupings. I've got career, global, by track. Um, there's a control in here called call it semantic zoom. So what I would do on the device to get to here is just pinch to zoom. When I zoomed out, instead of showing me kind of tons and tons of tiny sessions, it switched the content. So instead of seeing, let's do that again. And instead of seeing this zoomed out, I see an exception. at the end of my talk to what that exception says. Okay. Okay. I have to say actually that right now a lot of the things that happen happen when you're debugging that don't happen when you're running your apps. So mm -hmm. It's a tooling issue. If you look at the jump, now I'm showing by, by uh, agenda. I zoom out, now I've got all my agenda time slots. I go to Sunday 1.15, zoom in, and on Sunday 1.15. So I go between two different views of the data. Um, so I'll show you that control. There's also integrated search. If I can go in here and... Actually, let me do this. So the search, this is called the search charm, and you can search after things in all kinds of content. So you can search um, inside of Event Board. You can also search inside of uh, Internet Explorer. So if I search for orders in Event Board, here's my match. It's this, this session. If I search for orders in IE, shell is something you can implement and allow external things to search in your app or for your app to search in external things.
another operating system interface you can, or a shell interface you can get to, is settings. So the recommendation now is that each app show a settings pane off to the side where you've got your settings. And here I've got an account setting. I can go into here. I might have done for, done for username and password. Log in and get my personalized schedule. So let's see how some of that stuff works. Oh, one, one last thing that's specific to this platform. Menus. So where do menus go? There's on the device, pretty much the way it works is you swipe up to the bottom to bring up application functionality. It's not on right now. You swipe from the side to get to these charms. You swipe from here to switch between apps. I'll do some keyboard shortcuts for these things. So Windows Z brings up the menu. So here's just how we put a refresh button in, in the app. It's kind of like the application bar on the phone. And this guy. If you want to know how to end an app you're running, Alt F4 is the way to get out of it. Difficult when you don't have a keyboard though. So let's look at this search integration. It's actually very, very straightforward. In your page that you want to search, you can call search pane dot get for current view. That returns an object. That object has different event, different events that you can attach an event handler to. So there's an on query submitted event. So here it is. And you can bring the search pane into view whenever you want by doing search pane dot show. So I can show that in my demo here. But here it is. If I click this button, that's search pane dot show. So, pretty straightforward, and when I type text into my search pane and hit search, when I hit search, this on query submitted gets called, and one of the arguments it passes in is the query text. And all I do is I set filter, which is a property on this form, and if it changes, I call into configure data on my app, remodel, which will then filter the change of the main query that filters the sessions and then it rebinds it to that. Collection um, resource and there we are. So this is the entirety of the code to integrate search into your application. You can do other cool things. So you can return suggestions back to the searcher. So if they type start typing John, I've got a list of all the speakers, I've got a list of tags, tracks. I can suggest job orders back to the shell, and it will show up back in the drop-down list of, of word locations. So my app can provide its own knowledge of possible matches back to the shell, which will not show up in time, which is nice. The settings here, same thing again. There's a settings pane get for current view. You can call that to get a handle to it. You can um, respond to an event that fires when it opens up, and it opens up when you press that Windows I or when you swipe in from the side. And what you can do is you can add stuff onto here. So here it says account. That's because I define a command here, a settings command, and then I add that command to the pane. Here. That causes this to show up. And you can add whatever you want here, but there's some built in well known commands that they want you to reuse so that all apps kind of behave consistently. So there's an account command, so I'm using known settings command on account. 
then what I do in here is I can put some code that gets called when that command is invoked. And all that code actually does is it shows a user control. The author of all this is right here. Um, it's just a regular user control. Is that large content fonts? Yeah, it's kind of there. Yeah, so here's the, the panel, and then here's the container style. Another thing you'll see, which I didn't show, um, which is a little difficult to do without the tablet, but the Metro has different sizes of your application. So this is the full screen version. And let me start another app. Uh, so you can kind of drag an app out from the side. Three sizes, three windows, you've got the whole screen, 
you've got like two thirds of the screen where you've got this view. And there's some events that you can handle in your code to switch between those. And there's no real magic there, you just provide some different views. And what you see here is I have a list view that I use when it's snapped off to the side. And that just shows all the conferences that are in the database at the top to bottom. And then I've got my full view, which I use for both the full screen and the two thirds screen, which shows some more information. And to switch between them, all I do is handle this event, and I have a visual state manager here. And I just, when I go to snapped, basically I animate, um, I animate the visibility of the item list view to be visible, and I animate the visibility of my jump view to be hidden. So I, you show the one, you hide the other, and then when the event goes, you switch the other way around. So that's the magic zoom. Yay, we got there. So there's a lot of reading to be done, and not as much as I would like to, because it's new. Miguel de Casa um, has a nice take on WinRT. Um, Daniel Playston's talk from Dell, he's a Microsoft guy, has a ton of good information about porting apps. This, this um, presentation will be available after CodeCamp, so you can get these links. Um, but you can watch his talk. Um, the sample apps from Build are where I've been doing my digging, and Jay has been doing <laughs> digging for me, to find examples of all of these different techniques and piece them together. Uh, there's a couple of great blogs on migrating phone apps to Metro from Microsoft. Um, there's a great site here, if, if you're not disturbed by too much French, .com. It's in French, but his code examples are in C sharp. And he shows how to do the same thing in Desktop Silverlight, WTF, Phone Silverlight, and Metro XAML, um, side by side. It's a great resource for understanding the similarities. So if you use the Google Translate from the Google Translate, what happened? That's it. From French if you Google English. this, yeah. .min, yeah, yeah, I think you'll find it. It's one, he's got a series of blogs. No, no, I'm saying if you use Google Translate from French to English, that's oh. like, okay or no? I haven't tried it, but you know what? Just looking at that page, you look at the code and you don't worry about what's in between it. It's, it's all in the code. Um, there's a little bug you might hit here with Waves Property Change. I talked about the fact you can't inherit from the dependency object. Um, you have to remember to remap your namespaces. You can't raise property changed on a string, empty string or an null. These things will just go away. My, fi my final, I promise I'd share this error message. How new is this minority anyway? You think bro? What are some of the words in this error message? Let me check it out. That's like that's three letter word. Oh my goodness, come on. Look at this word here. Yeah. So uh, it's like nuclear waste, right? You try and, once you, you spend fuel rods, you try and put them down deep into the earth. I was talking to Peter, he said one of the main goals of when our team was to avoid any synchronous calls, like pretty much the whole API, you have to treat asynchronously. Right. Well, they've, they've hidden this deep, but it bubbles up sometimes mm -hmm. to the surface. You've got some column leakage coming up here. But uh, aside from this kind of thing that happens in the debugger, you don't see a whole lot of what's going on down there. But you don't know what it is. It just goes to show that technology never dies. Summary, this is an alpha. It's a great time to learn it. You've probably got a year at least until um, there's something out there that's, that's commercial. There is going to be a, a, an app store where you can make money just like on the phone. So there's an opportunity there. You'll find it very, very familiar. You'll be able to use most of your skills. There's some great new cool capabilities that you're going to have to pick up um, to make take advantage of and, and a way to send this one. And if you have any questions after this talk, that's my email. You're welcome to contact me and I'll try and answer your questions.